At the end of last term, we were looking at tangent to a curve, right? And this process of differentiation. So there's a good chance a lot of you, and I'm, I'm hoping, actually a lot of you have been sort of chipping away at that over the holidays, but I'm not going to assume that's the case if you spend holidays anything like I spend holidays. So therefore the first thing we need to do is just get back on the horse. Like what on earth, what on earth is any of this? Uh, what's, what's the point of it? So let's begin. What we would first say is given a function of x. So let's define it like this. If you had a function of x and you called it y, okay? So we know lots of functions of x x squared minus 3, sine x, uh, x cubed plus 4, whatever. These are all things where x is the variable you put it in, you get some other number out. Given y as a function of x, we can find what we call the gradient function, right? The gradient function. Being that it was based on gradient rise over run, if we use this y notation, we would say it's a change in y, that's rise, divided by a change in x, that's the run. Right? The difference is, it's not just rise over run between two points, it's rise over run at a particular spot because we're interested in a, a tangent, right? not a, a secant between two points. Using function notation, rather than this full dy or dx business, we could write this in shorthand as f dash x, and that's the way we would say it. Right? How do we find it? Well, we developed this technique, we called it first principles. Do you remember that? And it was all based on rise over run. We can define, we defined f dash x as, okay, now think. We had to introduce a bit of heavy duty machinery and new notation. Do you remember what the very, very first thing we had to write was? The limit, very good. Lim as h approaches zero. Okay, what follows is going to be based on rise over run. So there's a fraction of some kind. Does anyone remember what's on the top of first principles? Yeah? Go ahead, Eric. X plus H. Yep. Minus H of X. Okay, fantastic. Pause there. So this is just rise, yeah? And you're comparing the vertical coordinate at some spot and the vertical coordinate at the previous spot. So this take away that. And then, of course, on the denominator for run, it's about the x coordinates, right? So it's x plus h, take away x. But of course the x's cancel, which leaves us just with h. So we've seen first principles. This is great. We used this to have a go at all different kinds of functions. But eventually we sort of got to the point where it's like, uh, first principles, kind of tiresome. You know, we all don't like writing this. We even less like writing this and all the expansions that come from that. So for things that, the functions that we dealt with, right? Um, for degrees, or sorry, I should say powers, for powers of x, which were all of the ones that you had to deal with, we developed a handy little rule, which would get us straight to the derivative, would shortcut us through the differentiation process without having to appeal to first principles. So, if you were differentiating some kind of power of x, any power of x, x to the power of some number, what was the rule? Do you remember? What do you reckon, Shane? Um, n times x, and then to the power of n minus n. Fantastic. So we, uh, our shorthand way of remembering that was, you bring the power out the front, there he is, and then you reduce the power by 1. Hunky-dory, all good. Okay. But then we noticed, okay, uh, if you have a think about certain kinds of functions, like say this, we know binomial theorems, so we could just expand that out if we wanted to, and then use this on every single one. But number one, we don't really want to, right? Like that's a huge pain to have to expand that all out, get all the terms out, and then do your differentiation. Not only that, but there were some functions, like say this, where there was no expanding to do, right? You, you, there's no, binomial theorem is not going to help you here. And so what can we do to differentiate these guys? So we introduced a new rule. Do you remember what it was? Chain rule, very good. Chain rule. So the statement of chain rule is very simple. It's if you've got some function y, then you can find the derivative with respect to x by chaining together a pair of other derivatives. What were they? Do you remember? Yeah. Dy, 
This is a really squeaky whiteboard marker. Okay, so do I do you? D or DX, perfect. Um, the whole idea here is that the DUs will cancel, giving you the result that you need. And in this case, all you have to do is introduce a substitution, U, right? Uh, in both of these cases, what would U be equal to? Okay, so if we let U equal, so it's that inside function, right? 3x minus 1. Then this will become, this can be restated as U to the power of 7. And you'd restate this as, yeah, very good. So you guys have already gone the second step. I could have said the square root of u, but of course u to the power of a half is more useful because it shows you how to use this rule, right? Uh, in this case, dy on du, you differentiate this respect to u. So you differentiate this with respect to u. Can you walk me through? There's the rule right there. What am I going to do? Power comes out the front, and then power reduces by 1, which in this case is negative a half, right? Uh, and of course, you could then write that with this on the bottom, and then you replace u with whatever u was equal to, as we saw before, okay?